Welcome to another video in Galway Film Centre's Guide to Virtual Production. Today is all about live action, as in the actual production process we use for virtual production. So far, everything we have shown has been leading up to this. We'll be setting up our project for multiple outputs, choosing what will record what, and setting up timecode in Genlock. We'll also be showing how you can edit the footage using the Adobe suite of software. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Galway Film Center's previous videos and posts on virtual production to make sure you're up to speed. So as always, when we start back up, we're continuing on from the project we had from the last video. So in this case, what we want is to essentially have our project ready for live action. So we want to make sure our video is coming in, and as you can see, it is here. And we do that by going into our media. You double click, save, and here we can see it here. Next, we want to make sure we can simulate and that our comp works. And straight away, we can see our tracker is working. It's pointing towards the green screen, just as it is here in real life. And with that, we'll just stop, and we have our comp. And straight away, it's coming up on the TV. And if I simulate, there it is. And we can do the same for the background that we already have set up as well. And straight away, I can see the time code coming in and the background coming in without needing to simulate. So just to recap how all of this works, before we start with the live action and actual filming, we want to ensure that we have time code and genlock coming in. So those are those two windows here. And we have a set for 25 FPS, and it's all being read off of our camera. To see your FPS, you can go into your viewport and simply show FPS. As we can see here, 25. So to set all this up, we do that in our media profile, which we have already set up previously. And as you can see, we have our time code. We have our time code provider. And these are the settings we're using. And same for the genlock, that we're using the SDI input. So for this Azure SDI input, we're getting our video feed, our time code, and our genlock. So when it comes to actually filming, what we need to do and what we have set up is have our outputs. And that's part of our comp. With the Azure Kona 4, you can only have two outputs at a time. So for the most part, we've been outputting our comp and having it on the screen like so, as reference for when we're preparing our scenes. So you can also record like that as well once you have a recorder. As you've seen before, we have the Ninja and we have our Blackmagic recorder. And those are the two recorders we'll be using. So when we're filming, we do a few takes where it's just a comp and we record the entire comp in engine. But to give more flexibility, what we also do is do a few takes of the scenes where we record out our background and our foreground. And we do that with our two recorders. And these all need to be separate outputs. So if we go into our Agile Comp out, for example, these are the settings we need for us to be able to do this. Similarly, for the background, you can see all our settings here. And just expand these out. You apply and save. And then the same for the foreground. So when you're simulating and you want to film, it's the same as like we've been doing that we want our media capture on or off. So for the two that we want, we'll be turning them on. And when you do this, you should see them come up in your recorder straight away. You also want to make sure that you have your time code coming in. Once we're confident all of this is working, we're ready to set up our scene. Before we can get into the live action, we need to set up the scene we're actually going to be using. So in our case, we've already picked out a scene from the Epic Game Store Marketplace. So if we pull up our library here, what you can see is this sci-fi hallway. And this is a project we're going to be using. So like we've done before, to use this, what we'll need to do is create a project. As we remember, some of them you can directly add to the project, but this is not the case. But that's not an issue. What we can do is close down this project, and then we can open up the sci-fi scene in a new project, and then we can migrate it over. Hit Create Project. I want to make sure we're in the right Unreal Engine 4 version, so 4.25.3 in our case. Name, sci-fi hallway is fine. And we'll just save it somewhere where we know where it is and create. And as we know, this always takes a moment or two. So what we can do is go into the folder we saved in. As you see here, sci-fi hallway, click in. We'll open it up through here. And here it's asking for the engine version again. And we are 4.25.3. And because it's the first time it's loading, it's just going to take a moment. As you can see, it's just going to take a moment for all the textures to come in and let all the shaders compile. And as you can see, everything has come in. So to get this into our project with the working virtual production setup, we'll need to find the scene itself. 
So in maps, and you right click, we are going into our asset actions. And here we see export or migrate. So it's because we're going into another existing project. You can see here it says copies all selected assets and their dependencies to another project. So that's what we're going to do. So migrate, we're happy with all of this. And then we find our other project. And it's in the content folder we want to go into. Here we get a little confirmation and we can just save this project but as far as we're concerned, we don't need it anymore. So we can shut it down. And then you simply go back into your original project and it should be in there. So if we look in our content browser, maps, main map, load in and you can see our scene. So it's just going to compile the shaders again like it did last time. But now we have the scene we want in our project. So now that everything's compiled, what we want to do is create a persistent level of our core level. To do this, we'll go into our scenes again and find our main scene, which is BP main. And we're happy with it, so we can duplicate it. And we can just call this something like BP core. So we'll save all that, we're happy. So the difference between these two scenes, our BP main and our BP core, is that I don't want any lights or any kind of the extra kind of reference we had in for when we were making sure everything worked. So we can just start deleting all of it, essentially. So now that everything is deleted, as you can see, we can't really see much. And that's exactly why we had everything in when we were creating everything. So this is now going to be our persistent level. And what we can do is add a sub-level of our scene into it. This way, we aren't duplicating lights and there's no conflict like that. So we can just see levels. And we hit Add Existing. You go through your content browser. You find your level. In our case, it's called Main Map. As you can see, if you toggle each one on and off, they're separate, even though they're in the same level. And now you're ready to set up your scenes. So what we'll need to do is work out what we want in our comp to be in our foreground and our background, and what location we want our actual scene mover to be in for the shots we need. So now we're happy with the shots that we've prepared and we're ready to actually film it. So it's like I said before, that when you're simulating, you're simply going to make sure that these are turned on and showing up in your recorders. And once you have time code coming in, you're happy to hit record on both your recorders and your actual camera, and we're good to go. Now that we've actually completed our shoot and we're happy with how it went, we can move into Premiere to edit the footage together. So essentially what we'll be doing in here is using the foreground we recorded, the background and the video, and that we can comp them together. So we'll be masking some bits where needed and we can key out the green screen. And that's essentially what we're doing. The process involves sorting all clips with timecode, sorting the layer orders of each take, keying the foreground on the video feed, creating a mask for the garbage map, and then LUTs and color grade. Of course, the lighting isn't perfect as this is just a test, but you can now begin to play around with your settings and make it suit your own shoot. So after going through that process, you can see our final comp here. If you're working on a small scale, this is exactly the type of workflow you could expect to use. As always, be sure to check out the description for our recommended list of resources for all aspects of virtual production. We would also like to take a moment to thank our partners, Green Talent Europe and Galway 2020 for making all of this possible.
Everything we have shown in the series so far works for a single computer setup. But what if you wanted to connect from different locations? Multi-user is a solution. In the next video, the final one of the series, we'll be covering how to work collaboratively remotely. We'll be covering several topics such as virtual machines, source control, and multi-user editing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for even more virtual production.